We've got a question here on finding a sufficient statistic. So we'll answer the question and then we'll discuss. We've got a random sample size n from a geometric distribution. We want to show that the sum of the x's is sufficient for the parameter p. So the geometric distribution has only one parameter. It's denoted by p here. Instead of using the definition to find the sufficient statistic, we can use this factorization theorem. And what it says is, guys, we write down the joint property density function, or joint property mass function in this case, because x is discrete here, and then factorize, if possible, factorize it into a product of a function or that does not depend on the parameter, which is called h here, times a function which depends on the parameter and also the data but importantly that the data through a function of the data here is denoted by t. So let's do it for this question. We'll do it in two steps. Step one, state the joint probability mass function here. I'll just use little f instead of p so we don't confuse it with the probability parameter p here. All right, so because we're told that x is random, that's just the same as saying it's iid here, well, independent and also they're identically distributed because they're distributed like this, so the iid, we know then that's equal to the product of the marginals. I've done them in different colors here so I can map them down. So now just substitute this. This is for observation one, this one observation two, observation, nth observation. In other words, I go up here, uh, uh, instead of x, I do x subscript, whatever that observation is. Okay, then this multiplies out the, this thing here. All right, let's explain that. Just go over that again in a bit more detail here. So we said that x uh, sequence of x i is i i d, so the joint PDF is equal to product of the marginals. Notice the mat notation here, we're using little x's because they're just realized values. For this step to here, simplification, I've used this rule here. So for our exponent, I've done this in blue. I don't I think that needs I don't need to explain it once you've looked, seen that screen. It's as important always with this notation is that this is common error. So x subscript one just denotes like okay it's the first observation of x, that's the second observation of x as it comes as it comes in your data set. It doesn't mean that x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 2. Okay, so x1, x subscript uh, i is just a, it's just a label for the x point. Okay, so that's step 1. Step 2 is now to do the factorization, if possible, guys. Keep stressing it because it might not be possible. So we seek a factorization. So we'll look at this guy here and we'll see, can we split the product of two things? one that depends on the data only times the other bit that doesn't depends on the data through a function and the parameter. Okay well here you can see like the whole thing is dependent on this depends on the parameter times exponent but this also depends on the parameter so I can't split these two off so they come together. All right so then my oh what we call h here I've called h in the Right, in the factorization theorem, he's calling that they call that function h. So let me just change that so it matches. Okay, let's stick that h. Okay, so the h here is just one. So then we look into this part of the function and we look at for where the x's are. Well, it's over here, and we see like it, the function of x's is the sum of them. So that is the sufficient statistic. So sufficient for statistic for p, parameter p, is the sum of the xi's. Right, just a few comments. Let's go back up here again. So we know that p is the parameter, which is why I was looking for um, the split between the function of the parameter and just the x's only. Notice when I state my final answer, is I state it in big X because you know, it's realization here, it's going to be a statistic. Note carefully also that 
the sufficient statistic guys is always just a function of the data it can't be a function of the parameter otherwise it doesn't make sense for its purpose okay so now this brings us to the discussion so what what does this mean this, uh, to say the sufficient statistic for p is sum of xi in other words a sufficient statistic so a sufficient statistic is kind of like a data reduction um, where it kind of instead of saying you've got n bits of data x1 x2 to xn it's saying can we kind of discard the data or reduce the data so that we still keep information about the parameter and here it's saying yes we, instead of working with n bits of data it's saying that will encapsulate all we know about for inference about p through just knowing what sum of x i is in other words if you know what for a problem what the sum of x i is for this geometric problem we don't need to do we don't need to know all the individual x's for inference uh, more on this point at the end right so sufficient statistic we know is not unique because any one-to-one -one function is also sufficient statistic for example if we times this guy here by any non-zero number like 2 that's a sufficient statistic times it by 1 over n that's also sufficient statistic and you can recognize this is sample mean is x bar know also that the sum of the sufficient statistic here is also what we call this minimal sufficient statistic because the sufficient statistic here is dimension 1. So we're starting off with n bits of data. We reduce it down to 1. Okay, and you can't reduce it less than that, otherwise there won't be a sufficient statistic. So in that case it's called the minimal. And from the first bullet point you can see that minimal sufficient statistic is also not unique. Any one-to-one -one function of this guy is also minimal. Important thing is about the relationship between MLE and sufficiency, right, for this one parameter case, if the sufficient statistic exists, the MLE is a function of it. So if, for this problem for geometric, we can show that the MLE estimator is equal to n over sum of xi's, and sum of xi's we've already shown is a sufficient statistic. That goes back to the first thing I said about sufficient statistic is that it encapsulates all you need to know for inference here you can see like it is uh, if we know sum of xi's then we don't need to know the individual x's to calculate the MLE. The relationship between the MLE and the sufficiency can be seen in this factorization theorem because you know if you consider this PDF as the MLE which you can kind of view as the uh, sorry as the likelihood function then you can see like maximizing the likelihood function is going to be the same as maximizing this here ignoring this because this uh, function does not depend on the parameter so it's only maximizing this but this guy here depends on the sufficient statistic so your answer is going to end up with a sufficient statistic in it okay so that gives you just a, a little flavor I think of uh, this more technical aspect of um, stats